This is Professor Rudy, and this video is about how to solve a second-order ordinary differential equation using MATLAB. So first, I'd just like to define a dynamics problem that we will use to go through this uh, technique. Um, this problem states that there's a particle moving along a straight line, and it has an acceleration function, which is given by this expression where the acceleration is um, this nonlinear function of position. And what we want to know is we want to know the particle's velocity when s equals 2 meters, if it starts from rest when s equals 1 meter. So this is a problem that we could solve by hand and plug in these values, uh, but what we want to do is we want to solve this problem numerically uh, using the ODE45 solver in MATLAB. Uh, so first we just want to rewrite this in a form that looks more like a differential equation and we do that by recognizing that acceleration is just equal to the second derivative of position with respect to time. So d squared s dt squared is that same expression there. The other thing is we want to take these statements and come up with what our initial conditions are. So we initially have, so when time is zero we have one foot for position and zero for velocity because it starts from rest. So if we want to solve this numerically using ODE 45, this isn't quite as simple as solving a first order ODE because the way the solver works in MATLAB is it can solve a system of first order ODEs. It can't solve a second order ODE directly. So what we want to do is we want to rewrite this system or rewrite this equation as a system of first order ODEs. And the way to do this is we can define a new variable y, which is going to be a vector. And in this case, because it's second order, we want to have two components in that vector. So we can just call them y1 and y2. And what we can do is if we define one of the states as position, we know position is important. But we also know that velocity is important in this case, or we could say v or s dot here. And what this allows us to do is now we want to write our differential equation in terms of y. So we want dy dt. Um, so if we take the time derivative of that y vector, we get s dot, so that's the time derivative of this, and then s double dot, so two time derivatives of uh, s. So then when we write this in terms of y, so now we want a differential equation in y, we have that s dot, well we know because we defined that, that's just y2. So that's a very simple ODE, s dot equals y2, or y1 dot equals y2. But then for the second one, this s double dot, well that's also something we already know, it's this expression. So uh, it's just written in a little bit different format, but this is the same, same expression here. And so now what we have is we have this written as a first order system of ordinary differential equations uh, with respect to y. So now we can solve this for y and then from y we are actually getting the position and the velocity because uh, that's what these two states represent. y1 is position, y2 is velocity. Uh, so that is our problem and this is the kind of the new step, the, what we need to do when we have higher order differential equations. So what that means then, and in this case, um, unlike the, the last example where we used an anonymous function, in this case I am going to define a user defined function. Um, I'm going to do this just because it's a little bit more complicated when we have um, these kind of vector equations. But similar idea, we have to define a user-defined function, we have function, then the name of our output variable, and what the output of this function is going to be is dy dt. Um, so just like how we defined ds dt in our previous example, it's the same thing. The one difference now is that this dy dt is now a 2 by 1 vector. We need to give a name to our function, so this is... Uh, Whatever we choose, this probably isn't the best file name, but it is uh, something that's clear as to what we're doing. This is our MATLAB 9 demonstration function. 
and what we want as input arguments are the same as before. We want time and then our differential equation variable, so this y variable, t comma y. Then inside this function what we need to do is we need to evaluate dy dt. So we have dy dt of 1, so the first component, so that corresponds to that first equation, the y1 dot equation, and that was just equal to y2. And because we have y as an input here, we can just write this, y of 2. Um, keep in mind that if time appeared in these equations, you just put the time in there as well. It can be a function of both time and the variable y. Then for our second one, this is our y2 dot, or dy dt of 2. And this, these 1 and 2, this is just the, whether it's y1 or y2, which component in that vector. This is not time here. Then we just need to type in that expression. So we have that 5 divided by 3. Now, in our original thing, we had s, right? s to the 1 third. But what s is in this equation as a function of time and y is y1. y1 is our position. Um, so we use only t's and y's in these expressions here. Um, and then once we do that, we have things to find. There's one kind of subtle uh, thing that we need to keep track of and there's a few different ways to do it but there's one really easy way um, if we just define these two as is this is most likely going to default to creating this as a row vector and the ODE45 function needs the the function to give us a column vector it is uh, it won't accept a row vector it, it will be confused by that um, and one way to create a column vector and it doesn't matter if it's originally a row vector or a column vector. If you just have this statement, this will make sure that you have a column vector. And all it is is you just have uh, whatever your variable is, parentheses, and then put a colon in there. And that will uh, create it as a column vector. And then that's it for our function. This is the, the user-defined function that we have. So this is where we're defining the differential equation. Now if we go to our script, um, so this is just the problem statement again. So just as a refresher, we wanted to know the particle's velocity at a certain position um, given these initial conditions. So we had those initial conditions. When time was 0, s was 1 meter, and v was 0 meters per second. And how we define this in this case is we need to, to define these in terms of y. And in this case, so y we know is going to be a column vector with two components. The first component corresponds to position, so the initial position is 1, and the second component corresponds to velocity, so the initial velocity here is 0. And so that's how we need to define our initial conditions now as a vector, not just a scalar. Same as before, we need a time range, so we just have some time span. Uh, in this case, uh, I don't know exactly when our um, velocity or when our so we want the velocity when s equals two meters I don't know at what time that's going to happen so I'm just kind of putting a guess in here and this is um, hopefully enough time but if we needed to go back and increase that that's not that big of a deal so now we're gonna solve the ODE that we've defined and what we need to do then for our solver we still have time and now we have y here as our output and this will be um, a vector. This will have, well it'll actually be a matrix because we'll have the first row corresponding to position and the second row corresponding to velocity. Then we have our ODE function and here's the one subtle difference when we're not using an anonymous function, when we're using a user-defined function we need to use this at symbol. Um, this is uh, just a notation thing telling us that we want to get this function um, as opposed to getting uh, just a variable. So uh, we have to include that at before our function name, otherwise this is just the name of the function that we've defined. Then we need our time span and then our initial state. Um, so that is, uh, has to have those two components for both position and velocity. And then that's it. So we run that code, we will get our solution. So if we want to plot this, what we can do is, if we want position and velocity plots, and I'll do these using subplots, so I have my first subplot as the position, and the position is going to come out as the 
y variable and then we want to take every row and then we get this first column here so colon comma one is going to give me just the values corresponding to position and then similarly for velocity we have colon comma two that's going to give me the velocity values from this now to actually solve the problem this is a little bit more complicated than um, what we've done before because we want a velocity when position equals two meters but what we have is we have data that is time and velocity so what we can do then is we can find out at what time the position is two meters so we can use the interpolation statement here so we have position and time and we can look up when position is two the time will be the output of this function and then we can use that time to say uh, when the time is that value what is the velocity and then we'll get our output there and by doing that we can then get the solution to this as displayed here so let's go ahead and run this so we get our plots now and because we had this as a second order ODE we had two first order ODE so we're solving for two things position and velocity so we can get these two figures and then we also then can um, use that interpolation to actually solve the particular problem so we had when s equals two meters we get our velocity as 1.29 meters per second um, and that is pretty much it for solving uh, ODEs now if you have higher than second order you just need to um, create more states so if you had a third order you would need three states and you just extend this technique but that is the the basic idea of how to use ODE 45 to solve ordinary differential equations.